Um, and now what we're going to do is just cut through and that's your that's the port that Paul's using today, okay? That is it. You still got it. <laughs> right, while Billy finishes that, I'm going to finish the, the slaw. So once that's been in the fridge, it's the next day, then you add the apple. Uh, and again, on this little tool or slice it, however you want to do it, it's simple. Wash your apple, put it through the mandolin, you get all the strings, you add it to that. And what that does, it just adds refreshment to the pickle. So rather than adding lemon juice, which would be too much, that's full of acid and it's, a, you know, it's another flavour. So in there, there's not too many flavours, because some chefs are going, oh, there's too many flavours in there. The flavours all work together. So for me, it's a great dish. Right, I'll bring that back later on. I'm not making it, because I haven't got time and I, I, I didn't know what oven I was going to have, but what I really like to serve this dish with is cornbread. Uh, and on my travels in America, I found this recipe from a, a, a very wise old lady, and I've always made it since, and I've served it with scallops, I've served it with fish, and all I'm going to do is slice it, dry pan fry it, no oil or nothing, and then I'm going to put the coleslaw on top, because you're going to have rich pork fat, you're going to have delicious meat, you're going to have sweet and sour slaw, but then you just need something to pull it all together, and that's what the cornbread does. Uh, this uh, is made of polenta flour, and then I puree sweet corn and fold that in. I haven't put sweet corn in the recipe because that's my trick and I can't show all my tricks, but it's a delicious bread and I hope when you taste it you'll like it. So, yeah. Billy can show you something while I get ready for the uh, Pierre de Resistance, which is my green egg. The, the last piece of beef I've got here, this is the belly of pork. Now, 20 years ago, nobody wanted the belly of pork at all, and this we used to make sausages with. But uh, it's become really popular, as cuts do, they come in and out of fashion. Um, and now, belly of pork basically on every menu. It's a really flavoursome piece of meat, as you can see. Lot of, uh, lots of different muscles going through there, lots of fat in between those muscles. So what we do, we long, slow cook that, and that gives us uh, a really nice flavour product at the end of it. And there's different ways of dealing with this. Uh, some, some places we're dealing with, they'll do a nice belly square, like that. And as so we can score the top, or what we can do is take the, um, the rind off, they can cook that separately and then bring it back together as a dish, so that's quite nice. Um, and you've got the old fashioned belly rashers as well, so these are boneless because I've left the ribs on the loin. As I said at the moment, all the bellies were taking the ribs out because people really want uh, ribs for barbecue. But as you can see, there's uh, a nice piece of fat in there, all, all mixed with. When you long and slow cook that, oh, and press it to uh, remove some of that fat, but really that's probably the most flavoursome part of the pig that, um, that we sell. Right then, so... Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a baby gem lettuce, uh, and this is very French cooking, uh, and I'm going to blanch it in, in hot boiling water, which I'm going to add some salt to. Uh, and then I'm going to refresh it, and then I've got this little barbecue. Uh, it's called a big green egg, and all it does is, it's a barbecue with a lid on it. It's from uh, some Aztec cooking back in the day, a few hundred thousand years ago. Uh, and it's all ceramic, and they're quite expensive, and we've got them in about 20 of our pubs, uh, and there's a couple in the new, uh, in Hampshire, not in the new forest yet. But what it does is it, it, it gives the chef the ability to cook a piece of meat but add different flavours to it. Whereas if you charcoal something, gas doesn't give any flavour. Uh, so when it comes to adding flavour to the gem lettuce, this is quite bitter. Most lettuce is bitter or it's really bitter. You don't get much uh, sweet sweetness in lettuces. And all I'm going to do is cut it in half, drop it in there, refresh it, dry it off and put it in, in, the, in, the, in the big green egg. And all that does, it adds that charred flavour and it's sweetness. If you have bitter and sweet. Again, it goes with sweet, sour, and the whole, all, all the elements of the dish. But when I was in France as a young boy training, we used to uh, braise these in chicken stock, top them with mustard seeds, and then put parmesan on top and gratinate it and serve it with either fish or chicken. Uh, but again, you can't reinvent the wheel, but you can try something something new. And like you say, people's uh, views, and they watch TV a lot, there's chefs everywhere. Uh, people are eating out more and more now. <clears throat> I know people in the Hampshire area, you know, we've got a lot of the... Uh, uh, the older generation eating in our pubs, and their feedback is a lot more traditional items, but look slightly different. That confuses the hell out of me, but we're trying and learning it. So as long as it's not Hunter's Chicken, I'm okay. Uh, but you know, you've got to listen to your customers. I don't get up in the morning 
and write a menu around how I feel. You know, I plan ahead. Uh, I listen to the feedback from my customers. I hope there's none in the room. <laughs> well, you're all my customers, aren't you? Uh, but you, you've got to listen to them. You've got to make it work. Otherwise, you, you'll never get business right. You'll never get people back in your pubs. And that's it. So, the baby gem's been in there for you're not even 30 seconds. It changes color, which again is great. It's uh, vibrant. Put it in the ice water. It'll cool down in seconds. Strain it on the cloth. And then let's try not to burn the tent back. Right, then I'll bring this to the front so you can all have a look. Not that much. The big ones. If anyone goes to the Chelsea Flower Show, you would have seen these things there. Uh, you can smoke in them, you can barbecue in them, you can do whatever you want. Uh, I bought one from America after my trip there last year, and as you can see, ah, oh, it's quite cute. She's small, but she's quite ferocious. Uh, you put it on. You can smoke in these. You can cook overnight in them, and these go up to. Uh, this one goes up to 400 degrees C. They come in different sizes, but you know, if you like barbecuing, my wife's South African, and I had to get one of these just to make her happy. There we go. So this will take about, again, 30 seconds. You don't want to brand it too much, but what you want to do is just add that flavor. And it's nearly there. <clears throat> All I've done is used some oak. I don't, you know, if you want to use chippings to smoke fish and everything else, I think that's just, just the wrong thing to do. Whatever wood you put in there is going to create smoke. If you want to add flavor in there, you need to dry spices and herbs and garlic, and that will change the flavor. As a company, we've got our own smoked salmon, which I'm not going to promote, but it's really nice. Uh, and we, we soak it in London Porter for a beer company. So I got drunk with a head brewer one day and came up with this idea. But then we smoked it in the malts. We can't keep up with volume. But what you do is you're getting salmon. That's really nice. I know where my salmon comes from. Uh, it's malty, which is nice. Uh, and it's soaked in beer, which is a, a bloke's ultimate dream. So, you know, you can have, you can have a pint and you can have some smoked salmon. Uh, but yeah, you must try it. So, gems are cooked, and again, all I've done is char them. And when you try that, you, know, you can do this on a little griddle slate at home. Uh, but the thing about this is, because they were wet, and I'll clean the moisture up, it won't be wet or anything, but it's really tasty. And when you serve that up, all you do is put a little bit of salt on it, uh, and that's it, it's done. Right, over to, to my assistant. Okay, there's the, uh, the chunk, which is a really underused piece of meat. So I've scored that, and as I said, we can roast that as a small joint, or what we can do is we can cut it through for steaks like so again cut really thick so it keeps its moisture when you're cooking it uh, and that can be diced or as i said that can be minced as well um paul was saying about using uh the the byproduct from the from the uh, the beer for the uh, salmon but we're looking to use the spent grain from the from the beer to feed the pigs, so we're actually uh, being a little bit greener by putting the, product, the waste products back into the pigs and feeding the pigs on them. And so that's something we're looking to do in September. So that's really exciting to be able to do the whole chain back through again. Have you tried it yet? Not yet, no. We do use an, an alternative supplier who, we, uh, who has been doing it for a long, long time. Uh, and he's based in Wiltshire, but I can't promote his name because we're in Hampshire. <laughs> Does it change the flavour of the pork? Uh, it, 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 it's very, for, for me, it's, as a chef and a cook, it's very distinctive, uh, and it is tasty. Uh, in, in our new site in uh, uh, Terminal 2, London's Pride, we promote Hampshire throughout the whole pub. Uh, the suppliers have been there recently, uh, and breakfast is our number one selling dish, and the feedback we get on our black pudding that we've developed with Alton's and the bacon is just phenomenal. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of Americans going out, and Americans like their bacon, so uh, we're quite happy with it, but it's a great product, and that's why we're looking to do it now with Hampshire pigs in Hampshire. So, right, while Billy finishes up, I'm going to talk through putting the dish together. So what I've done is, this is pork belly. I've squared it it's up. This is cooked for 24 hours at, uh, no, yeah, it turns around, 75 degrees. And what I've done is, basically, I have a water bath at home that I, that I cook in, but for this demo, I tried something different. I double laid cling film, then I put this in. I soaked it in our Cornish Orchard cider with some smoked paprika and salt, and I like cured it for a few hours. Then I put it back in a fresh piece of cling film, the whole belly, wrapped that up, wrapped it in foil, and put it in the oven 
for 12 hours at 90 degrees. And then take it out the next day, cool it down in the right way, uh, cut it up, and then I'm going to pan fry it now. But what that does, it just makes sure that all that flavor in the pork, that when you roast pork fairly traditionally, it just oozes out. If you've got it in a bag or a pouch, or as Jamie Oliver calls it, one of his little funny things, paper, paper ones, you're keeping all those flavors in there. And that's what makes the quality, the true quality of any meal, you know, ingredient really come through. Uh, you know, the Chinese, it's, you know, cure and soak all their meats before they do their ribs and everything else. So, you know, that's, you know, something to, you know, I've learned from and it really inspires me to deliver uh, new techniques rather than new, new sort of ways of cooking. Uh, so that's a great dish. All you have to do for this pork is heat the pan up. So if you've got cholesterol issues like I do, don't put any oil in, you put it straight in the pan and you'll see what that looks like when it comes out. It's going to be golden brown. Uh, then in another pan, I'm just going to drop the cornbread in and lightly toast that when the pan's hot enough. And then I'm going to start building the dish together. So for those who have any allergies or intolerances, I believe there's no nuts or anything in here. I'm going to double check, but I'm going to cut it all up. Uh, I've got some other bits if you want to taste it or if you want to try the whole dish. Uh, but I, I highly recommend trying this dish at home. It's simple. Everything I do as a, a sort of a leader of business, I've got to think about the consumer. Can they deliver this at home? Uh, and that's again what keeps me going is, is the customer writing letters in going, I've tried your dish at home, mine was better than yours and this is how I changed the recipe. And I get a lot of it and that's great because then it makes me look at how we're doing things. And my challenge as a, as a head of food is I have 108 pubs with 108 different menus. So that's my challenge. And then listen to all my customers with the teams who I work with and making sure it works. Uh, and hopefully you'll see that in this dish of refinement. Right, while I get breath, <laughs> Okay, now, I don't know if you saw where I started with that large uh, pork middle, um, you know, I've turned it into so many different ways of eating it. As I said, you've got small joints, you've got steaks, you've got the belly of pork like that that Paul's using now. I've left the rind on, but again, if you're using a butcher's shop, he, he can take the rind off for you. That's one of the good things about using a butcher's shop is, you know, they are qualified butchers. They will do the jobs for you. You can go to them and ask them questions and they will have the answers. You can't do that for a piece of packaging in a supermarket. Also, when you go to the butcher shop, you can say I'd like one pork shop, or I'd like three. In, butch in, um, in supermarkets, they cut them all very thin, and you put two in a packet or four in a packet, and that's what you're left with, you know. So if you wanted two or four, you're never gonna see a pork shop cut that thick in a supermarket, because when they pack it, they want you to think, oh, that pack only costs two pounds 50, when it's so wafer thin that when you cook it, it's going to be like a piece of bacon. It's going to dry out both sides, and you know all that flavour is just going to go away. So it is better having a pork chop cut that thick, and uh, when you cook it, as I said, you'll caramelise the outside, but still keep the moisture in the middle. So I've created, I would say, you know, probably enough meat there to feed 20, 25 people. Just out of that one cut of meat there, that one cut of meat there will probably cost you about 40 pounds. So again, pork's very versatile. You've got slow cooked products, you've got the tenderloin which I've butterflied open like that. That again, literally, you could dip in flour, cook that on either side for about two minutes, and uh, you know, that's that's another meal created. So you've got your slow cooked belly, you've got your quick cooked chops, as I said, you've got a joint like that. That you can put in the oven on as hot as you want, 200 easily, as long as you rub the oil into the back. Don't even put it on a tray, there's no point in wrapping it with. Um, uh, string because all that's going to do is tighten it up you just have it on there like that cook that for less than an hour and, and have a tray underneath and all everything dripping out of that can then drip onto the tray which is fully veg underneath and that works really well okay so to put the dish together uh i'm going to ask billy to slice the pork down just a little bit so i can cook it uh in my allocated time but what i've got here is in this pan it's a dry pan and all i'm doing is toasting the bread this bread's got quite a bit of moisture in it so it'll naturally caramelize with the sugars that are in there the pork belly, I'm going to hold it up. You can see the colour. There's enough fat in that pork for it to cook. You don't need to add any more fat. And then in this pan, I've got oil, I've got butter, quite a bit of it. Uh, and that's where I'm going to cook my pork chop. Okay? Uh, put it together. Uh, again, these elements can be used for anything. You know, any other dishes, chicken, fish, and so on and so forth. But uh, hopefully you'll get some good flavours when you try this. I know you will. But 
it's understanding the distinctiveness between the pork belly, the cornbread, the sweet and sour, and the, the sort of the flavours of the lettuce, and then trying the pork chop. You just try the burn up so it fits in the pan. Is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, and this pork belly, you can chill it and then reheat it. Once you cook it all the way around, you're adding nice, nice sort of ca caramelisation to the meat. It's full of flavour, and if I'm going to serve that with a chop, that's two portions. I'd cut that in half because that's quite a lot of meat. That's about a good, good ten ounces of meat to a plate. So always look after your, your portions. Don't overeat. So the pork belly I went through earlier. For this one, twelve hours at ninety degrees. Uh, but in the in the kitchens, we cook it lower for longer. We have some quite cool tools that we can use. Uh, this pork chop on. Right. Always wash your hands between using raw produce and uh, cooked produce. We've been asked to remind everyone, which is true. Uh, we're going to put the pork chops in, a bit of salt. Uh, never season your meat with pepper before you put it in a pan. Always add the pepper afterwards. Uh, and as a personal preference, it's something I was taught as a young boy. I, I only like black pepper with pasta. You can ask any of the guys who work for me. It's not my favourite. You always get the bit stuck in your teeth and it's too overpowering. So when I cook with pork, because it's a white meat, use white pepper. Uh, and that's something, again, my grandmother taught me. And it brings out, I think, the true flavour of the meat. Uh, so plating up the dishes, again, just pick up a good piece of the, a good amount of the uh, sweet and sour store. Because the liquor was hot, the gooseberries have cooked down quite a bit. Uh, dip into the pitch, I'm going to plate this up so I can cut it so everyone can hopefully have a bit. Uh, and you find that some chefs just throw uh, food on the plate, you know? I, you know. I don't say take hours and make it look like the top Michelin star chefs do or when I worked in London. But it's just going to look like the customer's going to see everything. You pay £10 for a meal, you want to see value for money. And as a company, that's one of our biggest challenges. How do we make sure we're giving the customer what they're paying for? Uh, and again, same set. Get a tough one. Uh, we've just got to get it right. And, and we, we rely on that through customer feedback. Right. That's not even happening. It's a bit of green Sorry. Sorry. It's going to go in the barbecue for timings. Again, I'm getting looks now on the side. This is going to smoke anyway. Too slow. Sorry? Right then, so the pork belly, I'm going to cut that in half. I'm going to cut one in half for, for the visual. And then I'll cut a few pieces up and put it on a clean tray. And I'll let you guys taste that. Sweet and sour slaw. Actually, my sister Becky, come here, please. I'll let Becky carry it around and you can all try it. Sorry, am I smoking you out over there, Shane? I'll move that now. Let me just cut this up. I'll just plate up on the plate. See if we can try this. There you go. You'll see the pork chop when it comes out, I'll plate it up, but hopefully you can uh, enjoy it. Hang on, give me more slice. Uh, this pork, and hopefully you've really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I am going to promote my business, come to a fullest pub. We believe in Hampshire, we drive Hampshire throughout our whole estate, uh, and it's all for the people. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed it. Bon appetit. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to Kingston, Comfort, uh, and Billy. Alton from Alton Switchers. I hope you've enjoyed that demo. Please do try and have a taste. Um, whilst we just clear down for the next demo, I just want to point out that Alton's and Fuller's are actually running a young cooks competition at the moment. So if you've got any budding children who perhaps want to cook up a dish during the summer, take a photograph of it. Get one of the application forms from the Hampshire Fair stand and they can enter into the Young Cooks competition. Uh, details can be found on the Hampshire Fair stands. Thank you very much. <laughs>